This is NBC News for Universal Kids. I'm Savannah Sellers, and here's your Week in Review. Robots. Robots are helping people do just about everything. They already make pizza, play musical instruments, they can even fly into space. So what's next? These new medical robots are helping doctors and nurses in Bangkok, Thailand. These high-tech hospital helpers carry medical records, supplies, and medications. They even sing songs as they move through the hallways to cheer up the patients. The robots help nurses get things done so the nurses can spend more time caring for sick people. Robots are helping patients at home, too. After Ray Bird recovered from a heart attack, his doctor sent him home from the hospital with this healthcare companion. Hello there, Ray. Is this a good time for our daily check-in? This is Maybu, a friendly yellow robot that reminds people to take their medicine. Did you take your medications yesterday as prescribed? Yes. Maybu also records how the patient is doing and contacts the doctor if there are any problems. The wonderful world of robotics, helping patients in the hospital and at home. The Nobel Prize. Every year, the Nobel Foundation awards six prizes for important contributions to the world. It began in 1895, after Swedish scientist Alfred Nobel passed away, and he asked that most of his fortune be given to people working for the greatest benefit to mankind. The winners receive a gold medal and money that goes toward continuing their work. So who's won the Nobel Prize? Scientist Marie Curie discovered radioactivity, which led to the invention of the X-ray. She was the first person to win two Nobel Prizes. She won the Physics Prize in 1903 and the Chemistry Prize in 1911. In 1953, Prime Minister Winston Churchill was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature for his speeches that helped Great Britain get through World War II. This was their finest hour. And in 2014, Malala Yousafzai was awarded the Peace Prize after she stood up for the rights of young Pakistani women to attend school. You need to speak up for your rights. Now it is not time to wait for someone else to come and speak for you. It is you who can change the world, so you need to take a step. Congratulations to all the winners. And now, have you seen this? A Viking sword. An eight-year-old girl named Saga pulled this 1,500-year-old sword from a lake in Sweden. Archaeologists are now searching the rest of the lake for more Viking treasures. And if they need some help, they should probably just ask Saga. Ice. As winter comes, so does the ice, creating dangerous road conditions, taking down power lines, and freezing pipes. But for kids, ice can be a lot of slide and glide fun. So what makes ice slippery? The answer is so tiny you can't even see it. This is a water molecule. These water molecules work together to form the slippery surface of ice. Now imagine all these water molecules are on a dance floor. As the floor gets colder, the water molecules have less energy and slow down. During this slow dance, the molecules form long-lasting bonds with their dance partners, other water molecules. These bonds lock the water molecules to each other and create crystal chains, forming what's called a lattice. In freezing cold weather, these crystal lattices form over and over again to create layer upon layer of ice. The top layer of ice is the warmest and wettest part of the dance floor, where those fast dancing water molecules make the ice a slippery slide for skaters to glide. A Puerto Rican teen helping his community. Meet Jose Noya Marrero. A few years ago, he had a big idea to help Puerto Rican farmers sell healthy and environmentally friendly food. So he started a business called eFarm. I want to see how they produce their food so people could really have the farm in the palm of their own hands. Then, Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico in 2017, and farmers lost crops and communication with the outside world. eFarm was just what they needed to restart business. eFarm is a website that connects local farmers to people who buy their produce. Jose films the farmers and asks them about how they plant their fields, how they harvest food, and their personal stories. 
He puts this online so people can see exactly where their food is coming from before they buy it. eFarm currently works with 24 farms and has shipped fruits and vegetables as far away as New York, Connecticut, and Montana. Jose hopes to expand eFarm to other places so he can help even more farmers. Helping a farmer, it feels better than getting an A+. And now, have you seen this? Ever wonder what happens when you leave cash in the reach of a toddler? These parents paid the ultimate price to answer that question. Yep, that's $1,000 in cash shredded. Leo found his dad's envelope of cash and decided to experiment with the family shredder. Looks like Leo won't be getting new toys anytime soon. Remembering Pearl Harbor. Today marks 77 years since the attack on Pearl Harbor. In 1941, much of the world was at war. America wasn't officially involved until, without warning, Japanese airplanes and submarines attacked United States ships stationed at the Pearl Harbor Naval Base in Hawaii. Thousands of Americans lost their lives in the attack, mostly people in the military. The day after the attack, America officially joined World War II on the Allied side with Great Britain and the Soviet Union. The Allies eventually won the war in 1945. Most of the attack ships in Pearl Harbor were fixed up and used again, but one that wasn't is the USS Arizona. It's still underwater. Today, Americans, U.S. presidents, and people from all over the world visit the USS Arizona Memorial in Hawaii to honor the lives lost there. The memorial is built on the water above the ship's wreckage, and you can still see some of it 40 feet below the water a memory forever honored in American history. And now, have you seen this? A museum inside a phone booth. In England, these phone booths were dumped years ago as people started to use smartphones. Some British residents didn't want their phone booths to be forgotten, so they created new purposes for them, like the world's smallest library and the world's smallest nightclub for some big fun. That's your look at this week's NBC News for Universal Kids. Now, go join the conversation.